So the first thing within the setup that we need to look at is gonna be the size of the plate that we're using. Okay, so what we have on the bar now are bumper plates, okay, and they're the same diameter, but they're going to be lighter than your standard 45 pound plate. Okay, so let's say that these bumper plates, for the sake of an example, are 10 pounds. But again, they're the same diameter as a normal 45 pound plate that you see here on the floor. This is also 10 pounds, but not the same diameter, which means the bar would set much lower and you'd have to be in a much more compromised position when you bend down to get the bar. So here I can bend down and I'm in a good position. But if we had those smaller plates, I'd have to bend over even further to pick up the bar. The second thing that we're gonna actually go over here is going to be your stance and the width. So in terms of your stance width, we wanna be just around shoulder width. In terms of where your feet are relative to the bar, that bar is going to be splitting your foot in half, feet facing forward. The next thing that we're going to be doing is checking our range of motion. Okay, so our range of motion test and hip flexion for the deadlift is gonna be slightly different than the back squat. So when going over the range of motion test, what we're gonna do is drive our hips back, allow our arms to hang. As far as I can push my hips back, can I grab the bar? If not, I'm really close, but I think it'd be even better if I set the bar up on these plates. So what this is going to do is elevate the bar. So now I can go through that range of motion test, drive my hips back, reach down at my arms, and now I'm still within a comfortable range of motion at the hip. My spine is not compromised, meaning I'm not rounding, and I can easily grab the bar from here, okay? So again, if you want to deadlift from the floor, you absolutely can, but just understand if we're deadlifting for physique-based goals and we're not deadlifting for a sport or powerlifting or a competition, you can elevate the bar and that's absolutely okay. So the first thing that we're gonna look at, again, is the execution. So if we review what we went over in part two, the setup, what we're gonna to wanna to be doing is having our sh feet shoulder width apart, facing straight forward or in line with that knee as it tracks forward. So if you're an individual that your knee needs to be slightly, or your feet need to be slightly turned out for you to be comfortable, or that's where that knee is tracking, then you need to match your feet to the knee, okay? So think about that knee tracking in between that first toe, the big toe, and the second toe, okay? So as you have your feet lined up there, again, the bar is going to be splitting that foot right in half. Once our feet are set, we're gonna start by driving our hips back. So as those hips drive back, I'm just gonna allow my arms to come straight down, allow those knees to bend. And from here, I'm in a good position. Again, I've elevated the bar due to my range of motion. Now I can grab the bar. In terms of grip, I'm a big fan of the double overhand. You can do an alternating grip where one hand is turned over. What I would recommend though, is if you can, either use a double overhand or use versa grips or lifting straps. Okay, so the versa grips allow you to, or aid you as the load goes up to maintain grip on the bar. You can use, you can use the alternated grip, but you have to be very careful not to pull the bar or yank the bar because a very common injury in that is actually a torn bicep which can be very painful and keep you out of the gym for a long time. So we wanna try and avoid that. So again, double overhand or lifting straps or versa grips is going to be the preferred method. So as I get back into that setup, feet shoulder width apart, for me, feet may be slightly turned out, pretty straightforward. As my hips drive back, my knees are going to bend. I'm gonna be able to grab the bar. Again, I prefer this double overhand grip. My head is going to be in a neutral position as I start to pull the bar up. 
and drive through the floor, creating or getting rid of any slack that's in the bar. Again, head is neutral. And now I'm in a position, tension in my upper back, tension through my glutes, legs, abs, everything. Now I'm able to drive through the floor. And as I'm driving up, my hips are driving forward. I'll do one more rep for you. So head is neutral, abs are engaged, upper back is engaged. I'm pulling on the bar to get rid of any slack. Now I'm driving through the floor and as I drive up, those hips are going to drive forward. Part four is all about the common mistakes made in the deadlift. So the first one that we're gonna go over is going to be that head up cue or looking too far up or being in too much spinal extension as we start to push through the floor and pull the bar up. So the reason why I don't like this is again, as I get down into the deadlift and get into position and I'm ready to pull, I'm comfortable here. I'm really comfortable within this neutral head position, gazing forward and picking a point on the floor just in front of me to focus on. As soon as I start to do this, I notice my abs wanna go, my lower back wants to start to round, and I almost wanna to start to yank the bar instead of push through the floor, which is not the goal. Okay, so the goal being, being in a good, comfortable, stable position with a neutral head position, allowing us to control and keep a neutral spine. The second one we're gonna go over is going to be actually bouncing the load off the floor. So the deadlift is all about coming to a dead stop and pulling from a dead stop. That's why it's called the deadlift. So a very common mistake is to use, and I'm gonna just do it, use that bounce off the floor. Again, similar to bouncing the bar off your chest in a barbell bench press or having an excessive bounce at the bottom of a barbell back squat. Again, that's not what we want. Come to a dead stop, control the end range, reset your position, reset your breathing, and then go through the range of motion again. The third one is going to be yanking the bar, okay? So again, one thing that we're wanting to do, or a big focus within the deadlift is going to be pushing through the floor. Think about doing a leg press and just driving straight down through the floor and driving those hips forward. That's the goal. Okay, so the goal is not on the hands or the bar as much as it is. We have a grip on the bar, we're nice and stable in the upper back, our core is engaged. That, that way, when we start to push through the floor, the bar just naturally comes with us. So we're not wanting to yank or pull on the bar because as soon as the focus goes to yanking and pulling on the bar, we start to have excessive spinal rounding. And then all that happens from there is we still can get the bar up, but it doesn't look as pretty. And it looks more like a straight bar deadlift and something that you'd see on an Instagram shaming page. Don't find yourself on one of those and drive through the floor. The next one's going to be the butt shooting up. Okay, so as we're coming down, again, this plays right into yanking or, yanking or pulling on the bar. So as soon as you start to yank or pull on the bar, that butt is gonna to wanna to shoot up. So if we're driving through the floor, we're gonna naturally drive through and our hips are gonna come forward in a very natural motion. But as soon as we start to pull or yank on the bar, that butt's gonna shoot up and then we're compromised on having to just go through that hip extension motion, similar to kind of an ugly straight bar deadlift or straight leg deadlift. The next one's gonna be rolling the bar. So this is probably the most common and my least favorite thing that people do. Again, doesn't mean, doesn't mean it's necessarily blatantly wrong, but you're putting yourself in a vulnerable position and you're putting yourself at risk for potential injury. And if you can avoid that, I think it's smart too. Okay, so the rolling comes into play when you're trying to hype yourself up and you see people start to roll the bar and do this motion. And then when they're ready, they roll the bar and they try to time it perfectly to where they hit depth and the bar's in a great position, then they pull up. 
Now, if you have a lot of skill in the deadlift, it can work out in your advantage. But if you're not very skilled at the deadlift, what can happen is your timing is off. And as you hit depth here, the bar is not in position and you end up pulling the bar when it's too far away from your legs. And that is a very compromised, vulnerable position. Okay, so we're not wanting that. The last one we're gonna go over is the excessive spinal rounding. And I've mentioned this a multi I've mentioned this a multitude of times, but the last one I think it's very important. And this is probably the most common injury that we see within the deadlift is when that back or spine is compromised. Okay, so again, working on driving through the floor, being in a good position, a nice width, a nice stance within your active range of motion. So if you need to put the bar up on plates, if you need to elevate the bar, go ahead and do so. So for myself, I'm in a good position when I elevate the bar just slightly on 45 pound plates, because what that allows me to do is not have to travel as far down and start to compromise my range of motion. Okay, so the further I need to reach down, the further that back starts to round. Okay, now I don't want you to think that a little spinal rounding is bad necessarily, because as that load increases and you're lifting hundreds of pounds off the floor, you're gonna naturally have a little bit of spinal rounding. Okay, but we don't, don't wanna look like a cartoon character where our back is like this, like a scared cat. Okay, so don't have excessive spinal rounding. Make sure your head's in a good position. We're not bouncing the load. We're not yanking the bar. Our butt is not shooting up. We're not rolling the bar and our back is not an excessive rounding. Thanks so much for watching. If you guys are interested in coaching, reading an article, or watching another video, check us out, physiquedevelopment.com.